Namaste. So when we look at the world, what kind of picture do we see? It's a mess, isn't it? It's like being on an airplane and the stewardess opens the cockpit door and you hear the pilots fighting with each other over who's going to land the plane. The leaders are mad. And instead of helping the people and improving the world, they're just fighting over who's going to be in control. It's crazy. This whole world is mad. It's insane. So anyone who's intelligent, anyone who has the least amount of spiritual advancement or realization can only look at this world with great compassion and say, oh, these people are really in trouble. <laughs> like the people on that plane, huh? The pilots are duking it out in the cockpit. And everybody in the, in the back of the plane, all the innocent passengers are in, in great danger. So that's the situation in the world today. <laughs> Actually, it's always the situation in the world. It's just that it, sometimes it seems better than at others. But it's actually always like that. So we don't want to be in this world. I mean, if we have any, any sanity, any intelligence at all, we don't want to be here. Like my Adi Guru once said, this world is not a fit place for a gentleman. It's not. If you're the least bit civilized, the least bit intelligent, you don't belong here and you don't want to be here, and your only aim should be to get out of here as quickly as possible. Out of here to where? Well, the Bible talks about the kingdom of heaven, and the Vedas talk about the celestial kingdom, the pure creation, the home of the gods, and so on. And finally, the Sri Vidya scriptures talk about realization of Brahman through bhakti to the Divine Mother. And this is a special dispensation. Although it's always available, in this age of Kali Yuga, it merits our special attention because of all the different methods of approaching self-realization. It is the easiest, the quickest, and, and the most wonderful and jubilant of all of them. That is in my experience anyway. And you know, if you look at the history of this channel, I've tried quite a few. So the kingdom is there. Kingdom of heaven or paradise or moksha or liberation, or whatever you want to call it. But you can't just, you know, walk there. You can't just go up to the door and knock. You won't get in. Which a lot of people are trying nowadays. They're trying to approach this celestial kingdom, but without any background, without a guru, without transforming their karma. Huh? They're saying, I want out of here, but at the same time, they're doing the same things that, that brought them here and that keep them here. That is, they're not following the instructions in the scriptures and they're doing things that are prohibited, like eating meat and so on. So how are they going to get the keys to open the door to that kingdom? Well, the Sri Vidya gives those keys, but it gives them in code. If you read the original scriptures, you'll come away scratching your head and going, what are they, what are they talking about? 
because it's all in code. But that's what we're doing in our series on Lakshmi Tantra, is that she is giving the code. See, the keys to the code are given in one scripture, and then the message that's to be decoded is given in another scripture, or in a different place in the same scripture. And that's absolutely true of Lakshmi Tantra. So, to cut to the chase, what are these keys? Well, in Sri Vidya, or Lakshmi Tantra specifically, there are three of them. Tara, Tarika, and Anutarika. Tara is Aum. And she explains in great detail the nature and structure of Aum. And it turns out we were right all along. It's three long vowels. A, U, M. And the dot on the end, the, the uh, nasal, Aum. And it tell, the whole thing takes three and a half beats. Aum. See, and that last beat is a half. And this Tara, Aumkara, is, or invokes rather, the, uh, the I-hood or the egoity of the absolute. That's its function. That's its effect. If you chant it properly with faith, and even if you don't, it will gradually purify you until you do. So then what about Tarka? Tarka is Hring. Hring. See, Tarika is known as the wish-fulfilling key. It's the pot of gold. It's the desire tree. It's the mother of bhakti. It's, it's, it's got so many names in the scriptures. And what they all boil down to is that whoever chants this mantra gets whatever they desire. Now the problem with us is that we desire the wrong things. We desire things in this world which are perishable, imperfect, impermanent, unsatisfactory, and binding. So the key is to chant this mantra, Hring, but with the only intention of granting liberation. And Hring can do that. And Anutarka is Shring. Only one letter difference. Shring specifically is aimed at Lakshmi. So Shring is almost actually equivalent to Hring. Tarika and Anutarika. The only difference is in their order, in the order in which they are uh, derived from the Sanskrit alphabet. But their power is identical. This is all explained very, very uh, detailed way by Lakshmi in the Lakshmi Tantra. And the upcoming chapters are going to give all these details. Huh? all the keys to the secret code of the tantras so that you can decode the mantras and use them to enter the kingdom. The secret keys. Now, what always amazes me, uh, I guess almost 10 minutes, so most of the stupid people are gone. <laughs> what always amazes me is that the actual 
Lakshmi Tantra chapter readings get less views, like 50% of the views of the videos explaining the insights. Which is crazy because in the insights, I don't cover any of the details, only the major points and the perspective. So really, the two of them together give you the full understanding. One without the other is not going to give you the full knowledge or the application. So you should be watching the chapter videos before watching the insight videos to get the full message, the full impact of this knowledge. And you should be ready to observe these things in your life. This is not just theory. This is not just some theology. This is not just some, you know, religious doctrine that somebody made up. This is the reality. This is the reality. And those who have some alternate explanation, you know, like the stupid politicians, right? They have so many plans to improve the world, but somehow their plans just wind up making things worse because they don't have this knowledge. If they had this knowledge, they would stop all this chasing after all this nonsense technology and weapons and stuff. And they would make a huge endeavor to educate the people in these secret keys. This is really what human life is for. So this is what we're doing. Since the leaders aren't smart enough to do it, we're doing it. And of course, we're just one, one man operation here. Uh, what can we do? How much can we do, realistically? Not a whole lot. But if you all would take this up seriously, apply it in your lives, and spread it, promote it, share it, like I'm doing, you know? The books are there for everybody. You can find them online, you can download them, or you can download them from links in our videos. Huh? Why aren't you doing it? Don't you care? Aren't you compassionate? Don't you see how much suffering there is in the world? Don't you see how it can so easily all be changed? All that people have to do is start chanting these things. See, like the first three words of the Maha Sodashi Mantra are Ao, Shring, and Hring. Tara, Anutarika, and Tarika. The first three words, and the rest, of course, is also very potent. But the whole point is, if you can even remember just the first three words of this Mahashodashi Mantra, you would get so much benefit. And if you go and follow our recommendations and take initiation so that you have a link with the lineage, the parampara, the disciplic lineage, then it's so much more potent. You see, but people don't follow our recommendations, our suggestions. They think they know better than we do. <laughs> Even after a lifetime of full-time research and practice in this field, they think they know better. So, you know, it's just like the politicians. They have really no basis for the things they're saying. They're just pulling stuff out of a hat. But because they have the power, they get to broadcast it and people actually believe it. Well, I think that this message should have some power behind it. I think this message, which is based in compassion, should have much more facility and much more interest from the people at large because it is the heart of compassion that yields all desires. Aum Tatsat. Aum Shakti. Aum.